White House says no time to waste. In fact, we're already behind here in the race to fight climate change. A new report coming out today showing greenhouse gas emissions already having bad effects on the environment. The scientists say it's only going to get worse in the, in the future if we don't turn things around. We will have a look at political infighting going on as a result of this report. And more schoolgirls in Nigeria taken by Islamic terrorists after they already claim responsibility of abducting nearly 300 more. So the question is, what now? When or if will the world get involved or just watch this tragic story unfold? And new developments in the Bridgegate probe. One of the governor's former aides in New Jersey testifies in the case why authorities think she may help clue them in on what led to those lane closures. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us this Tuesday evening, May 6th. And tonight, we're going to start with a warning from the government, a warning we've heard before, but not with this level of detail. Shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody, the negative aspects of climate change. But if you think it's some far-off problem, think again. They are already impacting our economy, environment, and just overall way of life. The report says, among other things, Quote, historically, the United States, with its large cars, large houses, and high per capita consumption of energy, was responsible for emissions, more emissions, than any other country. Going on to say that lately, China has become the largest emitter overall, though its emissions per person are still far below those of the United States. And this may also not come as a surprise, but every part of the country is getting hotter, in some cases, much, much hotter. Since 1991, Every single region in the U.S. has been warming with the biggest temperature spikes occurring in the winter and the spring. Now, you can also expect storms to get even heavier and more frequent and more severe. As the atmosphere heats up, it can hold more water vapor, which can lead to heavier precipitation. And I don't have to tell too many of you, those of you out there what that's been like this past year. Also, scientists say sea levels rising quickly here in the East Coast in particular, so expect more shoreline flooding. Now, the take home from all of this, human-made climate change is continuing to grow stronger and Americans are noticing changes all around them. This is not some faraway thing. We can do something about it. Starting with raising warning flags. The Obama administration has seized on a new report from the federal government, the 840-page National Climate Assessment. It says the effects of climate change are expected to become increasingly disruptive throughout this century and beyond. In an interview today with ABC meteorologist Ginger Z, President Obama said the report shows that Washington needs to act urgently. We also have a, a chance to turn back uh, these rising temperatures if uh, we take some bold actions now. And that's going to require a combination of government action, business action. The Obama administration has its own climate action plan released last year that aims to cut carbon pollution and stem the effects of climate change. We're going to have to continue to uh, increase uh, the solar and wind power that we're using and other renewables. But some on the right call the report alarmist and will be used to justify government overreach and President Obama's political agenda. And we're going to tell you what Senator McConnell's had to say in a few minutes. Now, the president he does hope that the warnings will make Americans put pressure on public officials. However, recent attempts to address climate change, they've gotten nowhere when it comes to Congress. We're going to have more on that, as I said, coming up. Now, earlier today, I spoke with Craig Ferguson. He's a research associate at the Atmospheric Science Research Center over at the University of Albany, SUNY. The big message of this report is in preventative maintenance and reconsideration of current management practices in light of projected climate change over the next 50 and 100 years. If you think about the U.S. globally, I have sincere concerns about the food security of our nation. Farmers, especially in the Midwest, the breadbasket of the U.S., will be severely hit by the storm. We look back in 2012, over half of the country was covered in moderate to severe drought. Um, and so if people don't believe climate change, they, they should believe the intensity of drought and the increasing intensity and frequency of drought in the U.S. will play a big role in the country's future. And they may have to reevaluate our position in the world in terms of what is the true value of water to the U.S., um, what is the role of the U.S. in the world's global uh, virtual water trade, 
Um, and more locally, you know, what is the value of New York State water when we talk about the politics of using water for uh, fracking of shale gas? In fact, New York State is the most vulnerable, according to the American Meteorological Society, to the impacts of climate change. Preparing, adapting now for climate change will be cost effective in the future, and it starts locally. All right, I want to bring on a panel on this, and tonight we're joined by Richard Brodsky, former New York State Assemblyman, now a senior fellow at Demos and professor at NYU, among other things. Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. Richard St. Paul, Republican strategist and former vice chair for the National Black Republican Association, and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. I'll start with you, Andrew. It seems that we've had this conversation in this country for some time now, and the first stage was like in many denial, where you had many people saying, oh, this is just some political, uh, you know, a hot potato. They've created this thing. There's no such thing as global warming. The skepticism grew a little bit lower, although you still heard some. Now it's almost all gone. But, and we'll get into the politics of actually getting something done, but nonetheless, it seems that we may have an acceptance about this, but people don't have the first idea what either they're, um, what we ought to do about it or what they're willing to do about it. I, I would disagree with you respectfully in that I don't think that, that there is total unanimity. Not there total, is, but there is, you say there it's is within almost overwhelming? There is within scientific realm. Within the political realm, absolutely not. There are still plenty of people who dispute whether climate change is happening or whether man... Uh, human beings have a role in, in leading to that climate change. And then, of course, comes the question about what to do with it and what you do about it. And you're talking about billions, trillions of dollars. That has a lot of people nervous and questioning the validity of the science and also saying, well, maybe it's too late for us to do anything anyhow. So there are still a lot of interests well, digging in Richard, their heels, objecting to, the politics, to these kinds of reports. Next segment with us as to what can or can't be done. But on a broader level, do Republicans not acknowledge in 2014 that global warming is real? No, I, I don't think it's them acknowledging whether it's real. It's how serious it is and whether or not the uh, Obama administration has to go as far as they need to go okay. in, in protecting the environment. If you look from 1895 to the present, 1895 when they first kept track of, of temperature, the increase in temperature is only 1.6 degrees. So we're saying uh, we're talking about all these increases in temperature and all this stuff happening when the, the effects really have been minimum. And so does that then translate to taking this drastic change and so drastic <coughs> measures what, so and, and laws to that, that are going to hurt the economy. I know we're going to talk about that what, next. What, I can't wait. What news shows are you guys watching? The Republican well, establishment for, yeah. was out today saying it's not true. No, no, no. Uh, we're going to play time. We're going to play what Senator McConnell had wait, to say. Wait, Senator Coming McConnell isn't the only spokesman. You have Senator Inhofe, who, who's the chairman of the Committee of Jurisdiction. He's the lone, he's the no, lone no, denier, he's I think. I don't think there's anyone the left The lone in denier. Senate. The fact of the matter is the Republican Party is out there on a bunch of things that they make stuff up about Benghazi, and there's no global warming. I mean, we still haven't arrested anybody in Benghazi. Give, give, me a, give me a break here. We're not going down Benghazi now. Here's my only thing. It's for me, I have, and I've been up front on this, I'm not what someone would have called an environmentalist. I'll sort my stuff or put it in recycling or whatever. <laughs> for, for the last four years, no other story than this one scares the bejesus out of me as it relates to my kids. And it impacts decisions I, I've made. I will grant you and that you have changed your views. No, no, not just but me. But you are not the leader of the Republican We're gonna do Party. The Thank you. We're going to do the political part in a second. But what I'm just saying is, as a nation, and we've seen some polls on this, as a priority, the public doesn't put it there, and I just, I just don't see what Half other people the leadership don't of the nation is saying it doesn't exist. Nah. Well, no, we, we've made tremendous strides. I think we we had the Clean Water Act that was passed in the seventies. Oh, the Clean, Clean Richard, Air Act. Oh. Richard, we yeah. now recycle on. Richard, on I'm not even pinning the blame on, on one party. Levels. I'm only telling you to think that we've made progress. Is, is even worse than denying it. We are so far behind on a mitigation standpoint and a, preventive, and a prevention standpoint. Th we have standards. Look at countries like China, India, developing countries that have more of the population than we do who don't have these environmental don't standards. Promise, we all live in that same round globe. And those standards are always and under attack, always job-killing regulations is what we keep I'm hearing. You, you have... As Richard said, I thought we were saving the politics. Well, well, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the kids. When, half, you, about when kids. half the political leadership in the country is basically, you know, <laughs> spouting corporate denying. interests and, and, and representing businesses that would be penalized by the, the steps that would be taken to, re the Dominic, needed do to remedy this. Dominic, do care enough about I'm talking the rank and file. I'm not talking guys like me who, who, live, who really no. invest in this. No, unfortunately. Until there's a Superstorm Sandy or something directly connects or relates to you or someone okay, you, that you know. Time out. People who don't even 
live and breathe this stuff. What do they see when they turn on the news? They see wildfires. They see drought to the point where people are moving because there's no water in certain places. They've seen storm intensities where we've seen flooding. They've seen water level rising right now. And they've seen insurance people saying, we're not going to insure these places anymore. They're seeing extreme heat. They're projecting. Some place had 100 degrees today. So even with the coldest winter that heard all of us saying, hey, I'm going to move to Florida, okay? Even with that said, this again broke the record of the previous record for the warmest year on temperature, even with the winter that we had. My point is, there's no debate that it's real. And I believe it's going to keep going further. But, but Richard, but you have, you have one political party backing the interests of big business telling us that there's no problem at all. You have the other party almost screaming the alarm bell. I think it's more nuanced than that, but all right. I, well, I, I don't I agree with Richard, I don't that. agree with you. Follow that, the money. Fair enough, but I don't think we're still at 2014, Look, and I don't think I'm Pollyannish that one party says it's not real. Of, What's to do about it? We'll debate. The reality will eventually overtake the, the corporate uh, the, the onslaught. And people will eventually say, yeah, it's real. But we've lost 15 years to a, uh, to a, 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 a political uh, apology for corporate pollution. That's not necessary. It's not inevitable. It's counter the evidence. I give you all that. But it's real. Can I do it this way? Um, you have a daughter who far, far exceeds your mental acumen in, in every way, shape, and form. When you have grandchildren, <laughs> are you worried that what they're going to have <laughs> what they're going to be walking into? I didn't take, it didn't take me to the last two years to change my mind. I was chairman of the but Committee on the you? Environment, and we held hearings with the insurance industry 15 years ago when the insurance industry was saying, we don't want to pay for all the damage caused by weather-related uh, weather storms. So with all due respect to how my acumen, <laughs> I mean, well, however bad my acumen is, my, my acumen is twice as good yes. as your acumen. How do you like those apples? <laughs> But I asked the well, question again. Are, are, is you know, anybody else here really worried about this other than me? Really worried, not a little. Not like, ah, it'll be all right. We're in denial, Richard, and, until I noticed the Americans, Americans no, are like that. No, 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 until, no, 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 no. until it slaps us in the face. I'm not, I'm not in denial. No, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm talking about a majority. I'm not talking about you. I'm saying a majority of Americans. Absolutely. I'm not in yes. denial about how serious this is. I, I you know. Unfortunately, I think they a just lot of fellow, as much, not much can or will be do, done about it. No, I'm saying that that there's a large portion of the country that's in denial about this. You're saying there's unanimity everywhere. There's pretty much unanimity. Sorry, Richard, on this table that this thing is happening and it's a problem and it threatens us all. But we're not representative of the entire the way, country. In the report today, I just want to think about this. This may not be a bad thing for us, but I want it. They project the climate of North Carolina, North Carolina, which we all know. I think halfway decent will be New York in 20 to 25 years. So if you just take that as a little snapshot, if you want to, North Carolina is New York. Now, what does that make North Carolina? What does that make Arizona? What does that make Texas? What does that make the warmer? Y you keep going up here to a degree. We're going to have debates about, how about food? We're the breadbasket, uh, the American country, in terms of what we produce of food and what we export of food. We're going to have places that aren't arable. We're going to have water shortages. You think we have fights right now with Arizona and Nevada over the water and all that stuff and who's bringing it to them in California? What do you think is going to happen here? I, I'm not some conspiracy alarmist or whatever. This is real, and this is going to happen. It's like we're staring Go down this. to Mitch McConnell or the Republican leadership of the Senate or the Tea Party. And the Republican leadership, leadership, leadership of the Senate is Harry Reid, first and foremost. Okay, Republican so the, leadership? The, I'm sorry, the leadership of the Senate uh -huh. is, is, is we're Harry Reid. Right, we're so. going to hear sound at the beginning of yes. our next segment from Republicans, and you tell me if they're in denial about Perf climate change Perfect or not. Perfect segment. And when we come back, we will hear um, from the aforementioned senator, and we also want to get your take as well. So head over to Facebook and Twitter and sound off on our question here tonight. Would you vote or not vote in the future for somebody based on where they stand on climate change? We'll be talking and hearing from uh, leadership in Washington and also some fascinating poll numbers on this subject right after this.